So in the previous video, we saw that looped algol is a very powerful method for evaluating indeterminate limits of the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. But what about indeterminate limits of other forms? Suppose you have a limit that gives you 0 times infinity. How can you evaluate that? Well, it turns out that the trick is always the same. We somehow want to transform the limit so that we end up with a limit of the type 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity so we can use looped algol. But let me just study all other indeterminate forms uh, case by case. All right, so let's start with the case where you have a limit that gives you 0 times infinity. So this would be something like you have limit as x goes to a of a product of two functions, say f of x and g of x, and such that, say, the limit of f of x is 0 and the limit of g of x as x goes to a is infinity. All right, so how can we evaluate that? 0 times infinity is not necessarily 0, that's what you may think, but in fact, that's not true. It could be 0, but it could also be any finite number, or it can even be infinite. So how can we evaluate this limit? Well, let's just work through an example, and then we'll deduce how we can do it in general. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x times log of x. All right, so first we can check what case this is. Well, this is 0 times, and as x goes to 0, log of 0 is minus infinity. So this is a 0 times infinity case. All right, so let me do a little trick here. I'm going to rewrite the exact same expression, but in a different way. Instead of writing x times ln of x, I'll write ln of x divided by 1 over x. That's clearly the exact same expression, but now the beauty of this is that if I look at this expression, this is not a 0 times infinity case anymore. This is a infinity over infinity case, as x goes to 0. So now I can use L'Hopital rule on this expression. So if I use L'Hopital rule, I get the limit as x goes to 0 plus. Derivative of log is 1 over x. Derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, which is really just the limit as x goes to 0 plus of minus x, if you simplify, which is just 0. So in this case, we get 0. But the idea here was the first step. This was the crucial step here. Which was, which was to rewrite the expression so that we end up in either a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. So generally speaking, what you want to do in this case is rewrite the expression either as, say, g of x over 1 over f of x, which would give you infinity over infinity, or as f of x over 1 over g of x. Either case may, may work, so you have to try. Uh, and, and then one of them, uh, in both cases, then you can use L'Hopital rule and try to evaluate the limit. All right, so there's other indeterminate forms. Say you have a limit that gives you infinity minus infinity. What is this? Well, you may think it's zero, but in fact, it may also be anything else. It could be finite or it could be infinity because you cannot, it's, it's hard to compare infinities, right? It's not just like standard finite numbers. So this could be anything. It's actually indeterminate. So let's uh, just do an example and see what you can do. All right, so I'm going to take the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the negative side of the expression secant of x minus tan of x. Well, secant of x is 1 over cos of x, so as x goes to pi over 2, this is infinity. And tan of x is sine over cos, so as x goes to pi over 2, this is also infinite. So I get infinity minus infinity. What can I do? Well, the idea here is just the same as before. We want to somehow transform the expression so that we end up in a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. Now, there's no kind of uh, technique you can always use. Like they can use in all of these cases to transform the expression. Here, you have to be creative. Maybe put things on a common denominator. Try things so that you can transform the expression or manipulate the expression. In this case, the easiest way is probably to rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So I would get something like that. And the reason why I want to do that is that now I can put everything on the common denominator. So what will I get? I get 1 minus sine of x over cos of x. Now this is a still indeterminate, but it's of a different type. So numerator here goes to 0, denominator as well. So this is a 0 
or the zero case. So that's great because now I can apply L'Hopital rules. Derivative of the numerator here gives me minus cos of x. Derivative of the denominator gives me minus sine of x. As x goes to pi over 2, denominator is minus 1, but the numerator is 0, so I get 0, which is my answer. So it turns out that in this case, indeed, infinity minus infinity gave 0. But that's a special case. It could be really anything else. Okay, so that's how you deal with these limits. You somehow want to be creative and transform them so that you end up with a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. And the last type of indeterminate limits that I want to talk about is slightly more complicated. So this is the case where you have either 0 to the exponent 0, infinity to the exponent 0, or 1 to the exponent infinity. Each of those here is indeterminate. So it's not clear. I mean, for example, infinity to the 0 is not necessarily 1, or 0 to the 0 is not 0, is not 1. You don't know. It could be anything. So you have to somehow evaluate, find a way of evaluating the limits. Okay, so let's do an example. Suppose I want to calculate the limit as x goes to 0 plus positive side of, what do I have here? I have x to the exponent of x. Well, this is clearly a case 0 to the exponent 0. So what can I do? Well, the trick in this case is just like we did uh, when we did logarithmic differentiation, is to take the logarithm of the function and then evaluate the limit. So why would we want to do that? Well, if we take the logarithm, this will bring the exponent down. So we'll end up in a case that we already know how to deal with. So we'll end up with some either 0 times infinity case. In fact, we're always going to end up with a 0 times infinity case in these. So then we can manipulate it and use the Pital rule to evaluate the limit. All right, so let's do it in this case. So if y is equal to x to the exponent x, log of y is equal to log of x to the exponent x. That brings down the exponent, which is egg x log of x. So what I want to do is first evaluate the limit of log of y. Once I know what this is, then I'll know that the limit of y is just the exponential of my result. So I first evaluate limit as x goes to 0 plus of log of y, which is the limit as x goes to 0 plus of x log of x. This is a case 0 times infinity. In fact, this is a limit that we've already studied two slides ago, so I'm not going to redo the calculation. Here you would want to rewrite that as log of x over 1 over x, then use L'Hopital rule. But we've already calculated that, and we ended up uh, with the result that the limit is equal to 0. All right, but that's not the end of the story. That's the limit of log of y. So what is the limit of y? So in other words, what is the limit of x to the exponent x? Well, this is the same as the limit of y, which should be just the exponential of my result, so e to the 0, which is just 1. So I found that the limit of x to the x is actually equal to 1. All right, so this is a little more complicated, but it's very similar to what you did when we did logarithmic differentiation. So let me end this video with a challenge. So I challenge you. It's not so, it's actually not very difficult. It's very similar to the previous example, but it's really, really cool. So try to calculate the limit as x goes to 0 plus of the function 1 plus x to the exponent 1 over x. Do it. Don't take my word for it. Don't, don't just wait for me to do it. Do it. It's very cool. I want you to find, uh, to, to get the result, to find uh, the answer. It's actually a really interesting answer, and it's a very useful, this limit is actually very, very useful from a pure mathematics point of view, but it also has applications in many other fields, like in economics and uh, business and so on. So we'll talk more about this case in class, but try it. It's fine.